Professor Pickle might have an idea of who Chip is and how to restore the planet back to the way it was. Once they arrive at a country called Spangonia, they discover that... Hello? Bingums. Spangonia. Really? Who the hell is this? It's James. We need to talk about Sonic Unleashed on the Wii. Sonic Unleashed, if you will. Oh, come on, man. Do we have to? Well, I mean, you did say you were curious about the differences between the Wii and HD versions. Did I say that? Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another brand new episode of Honest Opinion. Tonight we're going to be taking a look at Sonic Unleashed for the Nintendo Wii and I decided to go ahead and call in some help for this one. So please welcome James from Stuff We Play. Go ahead and introduce yourself man. Hi, I'm James and I'm a bearded man who talks about video games on the internet. I make documentaries and I talk about old video games. I also like really weird Sonic stuff, hence why we're talking about Sonic Unleashed. It's a pleasure to have you here, dude. So, are you ready to trigger many Sonic fans whether you like the game in question or not? Oh, come on, Bigums. You know I don't try to actively upset people. With a series as big and long-running and with a community as debatably toxic as the Sonic community, it's kind of hard to have any opinion about any part of the series without pissing at least a few people off. But then again, as I proved by saying that I actually enjoyed playing Sonic Forces, watching fanboys writhe can be quite fun. It's an unfortunate reality, my friend. But without further ado, folks, is this game any good? And is it something we could recommend to you? Let's find out. Allow me to kick things off. Sonic Unleashed was released in November of 2008. Many Sonic fans held this game up on a pedestal, meaning that they declared it to be one of the best, if not the best, 3D Sonic games to have ever been made. You're not wrong, my friend. Lots of people in the comments section of the video I made of the HD version has plenty of nasty comments and to this day is still one of my most disliked videos. I guess people really just don't like what I had to say about that game. But now, now, Bigums, Bigums, to be fair, it's also one of your most liked videos as well. Yeah, I suppose you're right, but I think we've digressed a bit. Why don't you tell people about your personal history with this game? And what a weird history it is that I have of Sonic Unleashed. One year for Christmas, I got an Xbox 360 with Sonic 06, or the accident as you call it. 06 was so bad that I flat out gave up on the series for years, and this was despite having played the Sonic series since Sonic 1 on Genesis. Even games that I loved I didn't dare touch until after I played Unleashed due to 06 somehow tainting them. I know, it was weird. In fact, I flat out missed Unleashed when it first launched. It was likely around 2010 or 2011 or so when I finally decided to pick up the PS3 version as uh, in the following years my 360 had died and I'd had to switch to having a PS3 instead. This is likely due to having gotten a GameStop gift card for Christmas or something and uh, nothing else is too interesting me, but after playing Sonic Unleashed, well, I loved it for the most part. I didn't really have a problem with the Werehog, however, as I didn't have much to compare it to. I know many were quick to say it was God of War Lite, but I hadn't played God of War or other games similar to it yet. The graphics were beautiful, especially in the pre-rendered cutscenes which still hold up in the HD version, the gameplay was fast and frantic, oh and it literally sent Sonic on a world adventure, hence why it was called Sonic World Adventure in some regions. I enjoyed it enough to give the Sonic series another chance, and rediscovered the games I loved as a kid, going so far as to even pre-order Sonic Generations and to go back and play Sonic Colors, and get so distracted in doing so that I never actually beat Unleashed until about 5 years or so later. Whoops. As for the Wii and PS2 versions, which are essentially the same game and which I request to only have referred to as Sonic Unleashed, I didn't play either of them until after I turned 18 and conveniently found both of them for $5 at a thrift store. Wow, that's uh, that's quite a story you got there. 
Yeah, you know, uh, sometimes I just tend to ramble a bit. No worries, man. If you guys watch my review of the HD version of Unleashed, then you'll already know how I feel about the game and how exactly I became acquainted with it. But for those who don't know, my history is not too different from my colleagues here. The accident left a bad taste in my mouth and I had lost all faith in Sonic Team. Unfortunately though, Unleashed really didn't repair that damage as I really didn't care for that game either. I thought the Werehog gameplay was mediocre at best and the day stages were were just too difficult. I still love Sonic very much so, but Sonic Team didn't exactly instill me with much confidence moving forward. But I am happy to see that the series is somewhat back on track, Forces notwithstanding. Now now, For Forces is definitely not a bad game. I mean, I thought it was a decent Sonic game. Damn, what other Sonic games let me recreate Bubsy into Character Maker, but I'm rambling again. Uh, why, why don't we kick off the plot summary? Of course. So the story is no different between the Wii and the HD versions. The story begins with Sonic doing what he does best, taking down Dr. Eggman. But before Sonic has a chance to finish off Eggman, Eggman fools Sonic by showing empathy and remorse, which of course causes Sonic to drop his guard. Eggman then activates a machine to take the Chaos Emeralds away from Sonic so that he can use their power to awaken a being known as Dark Gaia. He does this with the intention of harnessing its power to rule the world so that he can finally build his Eggman Land Utopia. During this process, Sonic is transformed into a werewolf-like creature and the Emerald's powers are completely drained. With his mission successful, Dr. Eggman flings Sonic out of the airlock where he crash lands on Earth. Once he lands, Sonic discovers a character lying unconscious on the ground, and when it comes to, it's revealed that he has no memories of who he is, because you just gotta love the I don't remember anything trope, totally not overused or anything. I'm a bit confused as to how he didn't die, but then again, he survived in the Sonic Advance games, and Shadow survived being flung to Earth at the end of Sonic Adventure 2, so at this point I just think these types of falls aren't deadly in the Sonic universe. So, Sonic, feeling bad for the little guys, he thinks he's responsible for its amnesia by smashing into it like a hedgehog-sized meteor, vows to help him restore his memory. Thus, the two set off on their adventure. Since the unknown character can't remember his name, Sonic decides to name him Chip after he has an orgasm over chocolate. Then, eventually, they cross paths with Sonic's good buddy, Tails. Tails then takes our heroes to a professor named Pickle, who is able to brief our heroes on what's happening and what it takes to fix it. In order for them to restore the planet and stop Dark Gaia, they'll need to restore the power to the Chaos Emeralds of the Seven Temples in each continent. From here, the story just kind of pauses until you restore the Six Emerald. I mean, you go to new continents, meet some people, smash some robots, or Dark Gaia minions or whatever, maybe have a boss fight, and BOOM! Restore power to another Chaos Emerald. Rinse and repeat six times, and once you do that, it's revealed that Chip is actually the Light Guy, and it's his role to stop Dark Guy to ensure the balance between light and darkness is preserved. Eggman splitting the plan into pieces prematurely woke them, which is what caused his memory loss. That doesn't make any sense. I don't lose my memory if I wake up an hour before my alarm goes off, although it does piss me off. You're right that it doesn't make sense, but it doesn't really have to. This is a story about two gods who fight to preserve balance in the world, and a blue hedgehog who has to be the one who helps. Touché. Now, where were we? Uh, oh, yes. So Sonic and Chip eventually confront Eggman for the final showdown, where they emerge successful. However, Dark Guy at this point has his powers fully awakened and begins to attack our heroes. Sonic then transforms into Super Sonic, and he and Chip take Dark Gaia down, restoring balance. Chip bids farewell to his friend, and the game ends. Honestly, this story is one of my favorites in the entire series. In the HD version, anyways. I love the locales and how they accurately represent a country in the real world, and, well, okay, the NPCs may be pretty plain and I would even say dull, and that's a shame seeing how nice some of them are to interact with in the HD versions, but they still adequately represent what the developers were going for, kind of. Also, I'm not really fond of the static scenes which this version has a lot of. The NPCs breathe so much life into the HD version's hub worlds, but this, this is just boring. I'm inclined to agree with you here, man. The story, in my opinion, is one of the best that the series has to offer. It gives us cheesy and lighthearted humor, but it also does a decent job in explaining what the stakes are and what will happen if Eggman and Dark Gaia have their way. Sonic is a game geared towards children, so I can definitely appreciate this method of storytelling, although I'm not really a fan of Chip. He's pretty lame, honestly, and the fact that he gets no plot significance until the final act makes him pretty much a throwaway character, especially when you consider that he isn't even the one that does Dark Gaia in. The plot is imperfect, of course, but when you compare it to what came before and even what's come after, it's really good by Sonic standards. 
Colors notwithstanding, of course. I mean, at least it's cohesive and it doesn't really leave any holes behind. True, but you also have to remember though that there isn't much of a story in the middle. We get a few bits of dialogue and some cutscenes, but they really don't move the plot forward. Sort of like, you know, filler. A fair point. Perhaps this was just the best way to handle it. Perhaps, but let's move on to gameplay though. Sounds good. The gameplay is separated into two segments. You have the day stages where you control normal Sonic and high-speed platforming action, and you have the night stages where you play as the Werehog Sonic, which is comprised of slow platforming and beat-em-up action. The majority of the community seems to agree that the day stages are the best part of the gameplay, and I couldn't agree more. And though admittedly, I don't hate the Werehog. I don't particularly love him either, though I see some serious potential here, even if it really and truly wasn't fully reached. I just wish that there were equal numbers of day and night levels, lengthwise, with this version feeling like it's three quarters night stages. I mean, yes, levels are actually split into missions, so there's technically the same number, but the day stages go by just so much quicker than the long ass feeling night stages. Right, it definitely felt like there were more night stages than there were day stages, and I even checked to see if it was like, you know, half and half. But no, there are more night stages than day stages. You see, both variations of Sonic will have at least one long level. However, the additional day stage acts aren't actually new levels, but rather the same level you just played, but with an extra challenge, such as collecting a certain amount of rings. Whereas the Werehog has all of his own unique levels that all take three to five minutes to complete. And this is a far cry from the HD version though, since some of those levels can take 10 to 20 minutes or maybe even longer to finish. The goal of each stage, whether it's day or night though, is the same. Reach the end as fast as you can. The differences between them is what goes on from the start of the stage to the end. In the day stages, Sonic typically has to avoid obstacles while maintaining his fast pace, while during the night stages, Sonic will have to punch through everything in his path until the stage is over. That's a pretty good nutshell summary. The day stages as a whole are pretty fun and precisely what I look for in a Sonic game. Sadly, they're all pretty short. The night stages also have you solve puzzles, but they're so easy I bet I could solve them without the television even being turned on. I'm not saying that they should be brain twisting like a Zelda game, but they could have made it a bit more challenging than this. Honestly though, the day stages are an absolute joy, even if they feel a bit empty at times. This massive sense of speed is something I'd expect nothing less of from Demps, as these are the same people who made the Sonic Rush games. So another key difference between the Wii and HD version is the lack of metal collecting. In the HD version, it kind of forces collectathon platforming elements on it in the forms of these Sun Moon medals, and that's annoying. However, in this game, the medals are awarded to you based off of how well you did in each stage. I really do appreciate how you don't have to collect these just to advance the plot. Really? Awesome! I couldn't stand collecting those things in the other version, and it's one of the main criticisms I had for the game. Yup, and the medals are not necessary to move the story forward at all, but they do unlock additional challenges for more awards. Yeah, but I don't care about those. I'm not a completionist. But for those of you that are, there are a total of 174 medals in the game. 103 sun medals and 71 moon medals. That in itself is a lot more manageable than the 400 total medals in the PS360 version. So here, the sun medals are obtained by completing Werehog stages, and the moon medals are obtained by completing Sonic stages. Looking at the numbers, you can see that a lot more attention was focused on the Werehog than it was for Sonic. Yeah, that's a hell of a difference for sure, and considering that I really hate the Werehog gameplay, you can imagine that I struggled to maintain sanity while playing this. Anytime I finished a Werehog stage, I never had the satisfaction of knowing that I completed it. It was more like a sigh of relief that it was finally over. Anyway, let's go into the specifics. As we said, Sonic's gameplay is all about speed and platforming. As you collect rings, you'll fill Sonic's boost gauge, which will allow you to boost for a short amount of time. As you can see here, the meter is divided into several segments, so when you actually want to boost, Sonic will only boost until one of the bars runs out. This is really strange, because in the HD version you can just boost until you release the button, or of course, deplete the entire gauge. Even worse than that is that you have to flick the Wiimote forward to get Sonic to boost at all. I don't know if it was just me, but it didn't always work for me the first time I tried it. I found myself flicking the remote several times and then Sonic finally decided to boost. Seems like it would have just been easier to make the boost a button command rather than a motion control. What also doesn't help at all is that Sonic's homing attack is mapped to the same action. So there's a risk of doing a mid-air boost rather than a homing attack. It won't always result in death, 
but it can and it did on more occasions than I can count. When comparing the day stages in this version to the HD version, I'd have to say that I prefer the HD version. The Wii version doesn't deliver the same experience, especially when you have those clunky ass motion controls. Not to mention the HD version has more variety with their day stages, even though they're hard as tits. The Werehog levels are all about slower gameplay. You have to reach the end of the stage, which is pretty standard, but you also have to handle platform that has never been done in a Sonic game before. Additionally, you will have to fight through waves of enemies from time to time. Hands down, my least favorite part of the game. The controls are fine and the motion controls seem more responsive here, but it doesn't change the fact that I just can't stand this gameplay as a whole, and I swear anytime I finished a Werehog level, I was pumped to see what was coming next, only for it to be yet another Werehog level. Anytime this happened, I did this. Well, would, would you say it's better than the HD version? I mean, that's like comparing a pile of crap to a pile of mud. Okay, well, which one's the mud then? Oh, well in my opinion, the Wii version is the mud pile. This may be the same shitty Werehog gameplay that I despise, but at least the stages are shorter and the enemies go down easier. As I've said, I don't despise the Werehog. I wouldn't say I don't really have any problem with him, but he's definitely not one of the worst things ever happened in the series. I, his stages are bearable, even if not the best. But I can see why you and many others absolutely detest him. It's not all awful, admittedly, but it is rather bland. But I really do see the start of something that could have been great had they put more time and effort into refining it and making it truly unique. This gameplay style does show promise, and I think it could have had a place in the Sonic universe somewhere. Honestly, more than anything else, I think this was just an unrealized idea. Anyway, the Werehog gameplay relies on the motion controls more than Sonic's. I mean, you need motion controls for pretty much everything. But to give credit here, they work pretty well. I can definitely say that Sonic never did anything that I didn't tell him to do. If I may interject, I want to be known that the Wii slash PS2 version seemed to have been made with motion controls in mind. I played a bit of the PS2 version right after playing the Wii version, and it didn't feel nearly as natural as it should have been. Same goes for playing the Wii version with a GameCube controller instead of with motion controls. It just feels... off. So if you decide to pick up one of these two, I'd recommend playing the Wii version with motion controls. It's rough around the edges for Sonic, but the Werehog works splendidly. Or, you know, as splendidly as the Werehog can, anyways. Similarly to the HD version, the Werehog abilities can also be enhanced. However, it works a bit differently here. In this version, you don't exactly get to select what is upgraded. Instead, it's all done automatically. While playing through the stages, you have to collect what is known as Dark Gaia Force Orbs. Collect enough of these and the Werehog will either unlock a new fighting move or will increase his attributes. Unfortunately, Sonic doesn't get any upgrades, but then again I guess he really doesn't need them when you consider how little you play as him. One omission in this game that really doesn't do the game justice is the hub worlds. There are pretty much no hub worlds in this version of the game. Uh, d do the guy gates not count as hub worlds? I would say no. I mean, there's nothing to interact with here and there's nothing that makes these areas seem alive. It's just used as a means to access the next stage. And what's funny about that is that you can just select the stage from the world menu. So that makes these little segments just all the more pointless. Yeah, and honestly, should have just handled this in a stage to stage transition. Having these static images in place of a hub kind of just ruins the immersion that was there in the HD version. Not to mention it would have just saved time. Yeah, you can read the dialogues from the characters if you want, but th there's really no consequence or just skipping through it all so you can move forward. These people add nothing to the story, and they lack the life that they had in the HD version, so it's kind of hard to want to care about what they have to say. The boss battles were pretty good in my opinion. Shockingly, I had fun with the ones involving the Werehog. They all require a decent mastery of both Sonic and the Werehog's abilities, which is something that I can definitely appreciate. I also thought the bosses were pretty good too, but definitely not the best that Sonic has to offer. Though, the Super Sonic battle here was way better than the one to HD version, but as that one is by far one of the worst in the entire franchise, I'm pretty sure that's not saying much. Graphically, this looks great for a Wii title. I keep forgetting that the Wii was light years behind the 360 and the PS3 as far as hardware was concerned, so all things considered, it looks great. The character models are well detailed, the landscapes look nice, and the colors are bright and vibrant, even on the Dark Gaia enemies. Overall, this delivers an aesthetically pleasing experience as most Sonic games do. 
As far as how I feel about the graphics and graphical style, well, it's certainly a Wii game, and it's certainly not nearly as vibrant as Sonic Colors or even the PS360 version, but the graphics here get the job done, though things somehow seem emptier than the HD version. Like, stages just have sections that feel, well, flat and empty, and a little colorless. I think it's either just due to the hardware limitations of the Wii itself, or due to this being Demp's first foray into creating a 3D Sonic game. And indeed, I think their only foray into creating a 3D Sonic game until Sonic Lost World on the 3DS. Now the soundtrack is amazing. I love every tune in this game with the exception of one, and that dishonor goes to the night stage battle music. It's cool the first time you hear it, but it wears thin really quickly. You hear the same song over and over every time Sonic gets into a fight. Imagine if you heard that song during a UFC fight. Or how about a street fight? I definitely agree that the music is good though, although it feels just a little more compressed than the HD version, that could just be me though. With that in mind, through and through, this is still the Sonic Unleashed soundtrack, which is still one of the best OSTs in the entire franchise. Voice acting is also good for the most part, and I didn't really find the instance of where the sound mixing was too loud or too soft. Well done, dimps! In conclusion, this game is... Okay, I still don't think very highly of Unleashed as a whole, and I think this damage could have been mitigated if they didn't just cram that freaking werehog down our throats. Now, is this better than the HD version? I don't think so. There are aspects that make it better for sure, such as taking away the sun and the moon medals for progression, but otherwise it's a step down in pretty much every other category. And I'd agree, Sonic Unleashed is not a bad game, but it's not a particularly good one either. There's fun to be had here, for sure, though more so in the Wii version than the PS2 version, and while yes, both are mostly identical, the PS2 version has some framerate issues and the aforementioned clunky controls. Remove the static cutscenes, empty hub worlds, and half the Werehog stages, and this would be a must-own for any Wii collector. Make this game nothing but daytime stages, and it'd be an absolute classic. Take everything good about it and set in space, and you'd get, well, Sonic Colors. All in all folks, Sonic Unleashed, no matter what version you're playing, is just an average game. Sonic Unleashed is a downgraded version of the first 3D Sonic game to be made with the boost formula. Despite having some stages, particularly some of the daytime stages that are a ton of fun, and being made by Dimps, who was the original creators of the boost formula, it has too many bad things going for it to be what I'd consider a great game. So then James, is this something you could recommend to the viewers? Well, considering that if you took everything great about Unleashed, or really everything good in general, and I guess just kind of set it in space, you'd get Sonic Colors, I really couldn't recommend this game at all. Unless, you know, you found it for $5 at a thrift store like I did. It seems that we're in agreement once again, my friend. So with all this in mind, guys, Sonic Unleashed is like the Honda of Sonic games. It's not quite as good as Chevy, but it's way better than Ford. In short, guys, I recommend that you guys skip it. But if you're absolutely curious, then be sure to check it out if you want. But I would still approach with caution. And that, folks, is our honest opinions. But now we want to know what you guys think. Does Sonic Unleashed look like a good game to you? Have you played it? And is it something that you could recommend to a friend? Please, leave all that and more down in the comment section below. And James, thank you so much for joining me on this one. I disagree with the Ford comment, but thank you for having me on your channel. If you like video game documentaries, buying guides, and in-depth analyses, then why not subscribe to Stuff We Play, and some of everything weird and retro, and, uh, yeah. I'm a bearded man who talks about video games on the internet, and if you like looking at my face, then go over there to see more of that. Definitely be sure to check out Stuff We Play, guys. He makes lots of informative content, and honestly, you just might learn something from him. To incentivize you, though, I've actually made an appearance over on one of his videos over on his channel as well, so be sure to check that out when you have a free moment. And I hope you guys will look forward to next week's video. But until it comes out, you all have yourselves a great night, and take care. That's all the time I have left for tonight, folks. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of Honest Opinion. Be sure to let me know what your opinion is of this game down in the comments section. And hey, if you happen to leave a comment that I really enjoyed, then maybe you'll see it appear in the next video. I'd like to encourage you all to check out some of the other content that I've made. I've left a couple links here on the screen for you. And until the next video comes out, you all take it easy.